Well, I, I have to preface my answer to that by, in the first instance, saying that I don't think that, you know, that we have any special right to lecture or we wouldn't be arrogant enough to, to say here's the way to, uh, to do it. At the same time, we learnt from the South African process and it is possible there are broad principles involved in any process of conflict resolution. And it is possible to take those broad principles and then adopt them or tweak them to suit the peculiarities of any given circumstance. So I think that uh, if, you, if you, first of all, and put, put this in the Middle East context as I sort of try to spell it out, you have to be inclusive. So you can't, you can't say, we're only going to deal with that group or this group. You have to be inclusive. You have to uphold the imperative of dialogue. So you can't say, we will not talk. Now, you know what might seem a bit bizarre, because people are now used to talking to me as we're now talking. But it isn't that long ago since I was censored from television. I, I couldn't be, my voice couldn't be broadcast. Uh, even a short story that I wrote, uh, a book of short stories, uh, was banned from television. The, an advertisement for a book of short stories, an advertisement simply saying this is a new book of short stories, was banned from television. I was banned from coming to the USA. Now, you know, that doesn't work. What happened in that context was that the state decided upon a security, what it called euphemistically, a security response. So you kill the enemy, you censor the enemy, you imprison the enemy, you get your friends to support you in that, and you get your international allies to support you in that position also. So you perpetuate the conflict. Once you start to talk, once you open up proactive listening and dialogue, once you say, well, we can't choose who we talk to, the people have to choose that, then you open up an entirely different uh, dynamic, a different uh, trajectory. And then within that, you know, there cannot be any predetermined outcomes. Uh, everything has to be on the, on, on the table, on the agenda. You know, you, you can't say we'll talk, but we're only going to talk about this. You don't have to agree, you know, but you, you have to allow other people to bring their issues. Uh, forward. And then the, the key then, of course, is, is that there has to be a political will. You know, in, in the Middle East, in the Middle East, there is not the international uh, political will to resolve that problem. In my view, the, the international community stands indebted for its uh, failure to actually grasp that problem. And, and deal with it. The, the Middle East, there is a, a peace process waiting for political leaders. The settlements there, the, the ability at popular level, in my view, of the people of the Palestinian territories and the people of Israel to live together in two separate states, uh, but interdependent upon each other as neighbours that, that it, it needs political leaders to make that happen.